Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Guys, I look forward to coming every single week in your home, sharing another woman's story. Indeed, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. And you guys have been sharing that, that the stories have been impacting you. Well, this week I have another unique woman, Shereen Hemmings, an entrepreneur, a product manager, a coach, but a woman with a story. When we come back, we're going to hear her story of a teenager that slipped into what we call backsliding. Uh, we'll under get to understand that whole word, the whole matter of unequally yoke. Is there such a thing, you know? What says you? And then the whole matter of winning or whining. Well, guys, stay tuned. So much more coming up. Uniquely me is uniquely you. Balancing the different hats of life. Achieving all your goals in the name of Christ. Uniquely me is uniquely you. You can do anything. The S on your chest, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are a winner and you're an overcomer. You can be all things through Christ who gives you strength. Yeah, you are a fighter and so determined. You need the me. Welcome back, guys, to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Well, guys, of course, you know, I'm always excited when I have a unique guest. And so, Shereen, welcome to Uniquely Me. Thank you so much, Simone, for having me. <laughs> Shereen, um, we've been trying to do this for such a long time. And one of the time I keep saying to myself, you know, I wonder if we probably don't need to do this interview. <laughs> but, guys, I need to just let you know something. So, you all know that we did the period poverty campaign some time ago and this woman was instrumental in getting us um, a good amount of those pads so Shereen thank you again on behalf of my guests for helping us we were able to get those pads out to a lot of girls all across Jamaica bless God I'm happy <laughs> I'm happy to hear that happy for that awesome well I want us to I want you to tell us a little about who are you you know where you come from where you grow up that kind of thing you know tell us a little about you well, Shireen is just a simple girl. I was actually born to working class parents. You know, um, both parents were raised in the inner city, mm -hmm. uh, but tried to make the best for themselves and their family. Mm -hmm. um, two very brilliant people yeah. who sadly many times had to sacrifice their dreams mm -hmm. and their ambitions just to ensure that their children had yeah. better. Yeah, and so that was the story of my life. Um, both parents were strong believers in formal education. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny now because just in a recent conversation with my dad, he said to me, you know, he said, "Boy, if he could have done it differently, yeah, he would have wow. in terms of how he guided us mm. because it was all about." formal education mm -hmm. in fact I remember when um, all of us had to go through the same thing he paid our university tuitions both parents they put together yeah. they paid for it out of, out of pocket half yeah. of it and we worked hard to get scholarships to pay for the other half mm -hmm. you know and so I remember he said you know when we were about to start university for me mm -hmm. my aspirations I wanted to be a journalist Aye, come on girl. yes <laughs> you know and so I had applied to both institutions mm -hmm. and so I I didn't even know when you called mm -hmm. you know um, I just heard a call a conversation on the phone one day with my dad and he's like oh she got through okay mm. i'm sorry but the other university called her just a week ago and oh. her tuition is already paid <laughs> that's how i knew that i had gone through for university for utec mm. one and that my tuition was already paid <laughs> right so there w there goes that i went to to utec and uh, my dad said to me well you know business it's where it's at you have to get a, a career where you're you know you can make money mm -hmm. anything else yeah. you do on your own time you know mm -hmm. you can always still do journalism you know mm -hmm. but anything else on your own time my siblings it was the same thing, thing. Mm -hmm. yeah my brother he's exceptional at art mm -hmm. my dad laid the cards before him and said all right so I know you love art mm -hmm. but going to to art school on my watch no, you're not going to be a starving <laughs> artist on my watch, you know. Uh -huh. So it's either okay, you're going to go and do 
um, engineering, you can draw with that, or you mm -hmm. know, architecture, take your pick. So that's how basically, you know, but no, I can appreciate it, yes. what he was trying yes. to do, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it worked out because, you know, all things work together for, for good, good for them that love him and who are called according to his purpose. Indeed. Right. So the journey that I was placed on yeah. was because of that. Uh, that beginning. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Yes, thank you know, you, I look Daddy. back too, I must, I must agree with you. I look back now um, because for us growing up, you either, my mother knock it in our heads, doctor, oh my God, doctor, lawyer, lawyer. Um, nurse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and for her, she said one of the things, her vision for me was being a banker. Mm -hmm. And but the thing is, we, we couldn't afford it. But I look back now and I'm like, um, you know, her vision has really come through. Just this week, I was saying, I wish she was alive to see what I've become because I am indeed in banking yeah. um, and made it to where she wanted me to get to. But you know, thank God for our parents. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So, your parents, apart from ensuring that education was a must. It seemed to me that they also ensured that church was a must. Definitely. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's the most interesting thing. Because yeah. I'll tell you this. Um, growing up, my parents weren't Christians. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, you never knew that. Mm -hmm. You understand how they yeah. lived and how they carried themselves, how they raised their children? Yeah. You never knew that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things in my house, it was mandatory. Mm -hmm. Sunday school Is was a must. Sound like my one. Yes. In <laughs> fact, my, young, my memories of my young childhood on a Sunday, almost every Sunday I remember getting in trouble. <laughs> always couldn't find one of my ribbon, always couldn't find one of my socks, couldn't find matching socks on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and my mom would just spend buying socks and ribbons and bubbles and for some reason it's always one foot of socks, one, <laughs> one ribbon. And so every Sunday it was, you know, mm -hmm. and um, Sunday school was essential and you know going to Sunday school you get your Sunday text, etc, yeah. etc. Et and so I grew up in um, Sunday school. Funny enough though, mm -hmm. um, my parents, they allowed me growing up because I loved reading. Yeah. My dad was actually the one that taught me to read. Wow. Yes, he, he bought a little book called Teach Your Child to Read. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was about three years old, every evening he would come in religiously. He would put me on his lap every evening mm -hmm. and he would take out the book and he would teach me another lesson from the book. Ah. Right. So when I was in kindergarten, I was reading for grade six classes and stuff. Wow. Yes, yeah, so uh, that's, that's the importance of having parents and having a father that yeah. is very instrumental yes, yes, yes in I your agree. life mm -hmm. right and so he because of that uh, my parents didn't really restrict me they just wanted to ensure that i learned about god yeah. and learned developed a relationship yeah. and so even though i was going to sunday school on a sundays the jehovah witnesses would pass by and stuff mm -hmm. and my parents would allow me to study with them so mm -hmm. During my teenage years, I used to study with them and mm -hmm. I go to church and so, but they wanted me to be exposed yeah. to it, yeah. right, you yeah. know. And so that eventually it helped me because I can tell you, mm -hmm. that's how I learned my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Those Indeed. witnesses, they don't play. Uh, I yeah, know. When it comes down to Bible. So, yeah, so that my early start. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, I was actually the first person in my household yeah. to give my life to Christ. Ah, uh, bless God. Yes, being talk in a household us, of talk five. Talk with us about that. Yeah, being in a household of five, it was um, my parents um, and my younger sister and my younger brother. Mm -hmm. So of course I was the eldest of the three that was at home. I do have an older sister who wasn't living with us at the time, but mm -hmm. um, one day I went to camp. I was very active in church, as I said, my parents, it was mandatory. Mm -hmm. I started going to youth fellowship at my church and stuff, and that exposed me to a lot of things. So of course, you know, church camp, and you're a young teenager and everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I was about 15, 14, 15 at the time, yeah. and went to church camp. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. All I remember vividly, Simone, is we had a session after yeah. chapel, and uh, there was a minister there who gave such a graphic description of hell, Simone. Mm -hmm. When he was finished, I was like, no man, that's not so like my scene at all, you know. <laughs> Give me the paper where you sign up for the other place, because <laughs> <laughs> the place no sound. I mean, I was traumatized. Yes. So, I, that's when I decided to give my life to Christ. I'm like, okay, giving my life to Christ is going to allow me to avoid mm -hmm. that place. Avoid hell. Yes, <laughs> give, me the, give me the paper where I sign up yeah. for the heaven, you know. But really and truly, I did not know the magnitude of the decision that I made. Yeah. I just knew it was a decision made out of fear, yeah. you know. And so that's how I, I, that's how I 
gave my life to, to the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, we had new convert classes and stuff, but the church that I was going, God bless them, mm -hmm. um, we weren't really given uh, a proper explanation as to who the Holy Spirit was and yeah. how instrumental mm -hmm. he would be to your to your journey yeah. with Christ yeah. and how yeah. instrumental mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. to have a relationship with him in order to have a relationship with your Heavenly Father. And so right. I was clueless about that aspect of it. So I thought I was doing everything right. Yeah. Um, I would go to church. I was very active in church. I was very active in my youth ministry. I was very active in my dance ministry. I was very active in my drama ministry. You name it. Mm -hmm. I was active. My parents used to call me head cook and bottle washer. Right? Yeah, okay. like church can't keep it out, you. Mm -hmm. You know? So um, I was doing all these things mm -hmm. and thinking I was working my way to heaven. But yeah. we all know how that is. It's not by works. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, but something felt missing, and I did not know what that something was. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by the time university hit and you, the exposure start to all the things that you weren't exposed to before, you know, it was so easy for me to be drawn away because I really didn't have what to hold me because I, I, there was no Substance. foundation there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was years after yeah. that I found out. Mm -hmm that it wasn't a what that was missing per se, it was the who, mm. you know? And, you know, I learned a very valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to walk holy without the Holy Spirit. Ah, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's where many of us are going wrong. Yeah. We're going about it wrong. Yeah. Thinking a life is of holiness is possible without the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not. Yeah. yeah. So let us talk about, and I, I'm, I'm loving where this is going. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you. you so you, you've gotten exposure now. You're out at university. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of close-knit thing of being active in church mm -hmm. is no longer there. So you are beginning to stray. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting it in, in quotes. You're beginning to stray so much so that you got married. Well, you found the love of your life. Um, talk with us about that a little bit. Well, funny enough, I wouldn't even call it the love of my life. Because what it is, it was... And I want single women to pay close attention to this point here. What, what it really was, was... A lot of things were happening in my life at that time. I, when I tell you, the worst thing that can happen to you mm -hmm. is to give your life to Christ mm -hmm. and then step out. Yeah. I yeah. tell you, you can guarantee a proper beating. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me in the world. I got a proper beating. Yeah. I mean, I was advancing um, career-wise and all of these things, but I was basically a mad person. I, I wasn't walking in my right mind, and not many people knew it. Yeah. And so I came to this point in my life. I was approaching 30, mm -hmm. the big three zero. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody around you, Shireen, <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> and everybody who knows me, they know I've always seen myself with yeah. the, the career woman, with the, the handsome, you know, Tall, successful, dark and handsome. That's yes, what we call it, girl. <laughs> successful husband with beautiful children. Always, <laughs> I wanted a little boy and a little girl, uh -huh. a little girl first, you know, and all of them have names picked out and everything. And here I am approaching 30. And I realized, Everything the way I had planned it, my life just started to crumble. Yeah. And I couldn't, it was spiraling out of control and there was nothing I could do. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine who, he was a friend of mine from high school because mm -hmm. we used to both be presidents of our African Heritage Studies Club. Right. This young man, <coughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Start Rastafarian, you hear me? Mm -hmm. I mean, devote Rastafarian. And when I say Rastafarian, I'm not talking about Rastafarian, like Rastafarian, I mean, bubble. Aye. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, head tie up the whole word now. Mr. and Mrs. Hemmings, proper little Christian girl, child. You understand? Yes. Right. He always used to, you know, make his interests known from high school and stuff. But I always used to just laugh off. I said, Maybe yourself, yeah, man, and mm -hmm. stop foolishness, you know? And here we are, years later, this gentleman out of nowhere, he always, he used to work at sea, but anytime he comes home, mm -hmm. he always used to, you know, check. No I'm matter how, you. Yeah, how many years we haven't seen each other, he would come and ask after me to see how I was doing and stuff. And here is such one time, but by this time, mm -hmm. 
this gentleman was proper, proper married. He, he was on his second marriage, in oh, fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when he came around, you know, according to me, I tell you, the strangest thing happened. When I tell you I strayed, I strayed. Mm -hmm. Because I started reading books that I shouldn't have read. And then I think that added to the confusion yeah. as well. And so astrology that I was told to stay far from, mm -hmm. from very early, I started mm -hmm. getting desperate and reading. And I'm like, I was in the office one day and a co-worker was there with me. And he said to me, you know, we were looking through these signs, which signs go together mm -hmm. and all of these things. And he's, I see, he read to me about, you know, a Cancerian. Mm -hmm. And what was read, I seemed to identify with it well. And I remember looking out, he said, be careful what comes out of your mouth. You see, holy angels may be waiting to carry out the word of God, but you see the opposite that come out of your mouth? Yeah. Just rest assured, Satan has demons too ready and waiting mm -hmm. to carry yeah. what you, you ask for. Yeah. And so I remember I, the words that were uttered out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I looked up to the sky with so much emotion and I said, God, what happened to my cancerian? Mm. What an abomination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, not even five minutes after my phone rang, mm. here it is, this gentleman was on the phone. All these years we're friends, you know. Yeah. I didn't even know he was born in July. Mm. Okay. He called, he called me, I mean, not even five minutes after that said statement, mm -hmm. he called me yeah. and said, you know, he's in the country and he had stopped by my house, but my parents said I wasn't there, mm. you know, and he longed to see me, how am I, where am I? I was working in New Kingston at the time. Mm -hmm. He said, really? I'm right around the road. Wow. I came to the Digicel. Wow. In, and, you know, can we link up? Mm -hmm. Let's just say it was downhill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yes. you know, I'm just listening to you that it just sounds so appropriate. And, and I'm just listening to you that, you know, when, we, when, we, when we're desperate, when we're desperate, we, everything looks right. Mm -hmm. Everything that is said appears right. Mm -hmm. And it just seems as if everything is lining up mm -hmm. with exactly how we want it. And that's the thing, deception yeah. of the enemy. We yeah. have to be very careful yeah. of deception. Yeah. And, and you know something, I want to be very clear here, because the thing is, you you were, yes, you're still in the church in all of this time, right? No, actually, I was a proper backslider. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. hence mm -hmm. the astrology and the reading of all these books yeah. and stuff. Yeah, oh God. So you were no longer attending church, you were no longer reading the Bible, is that um, what was happening? I was no longer like, physically attending church. Yeah. Um, word, weird enough, I wasn't as in my Bible as intensely yeah. at the time. If I were, mm -hmm. I believe that I wouldn't have walked in the yeah. traps, many of the traps that I did. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, I was just living a wayward life. It was mm -hmm. really just a wayward life. So let me ask you something, um, Shireen. Mm -hmm. If somebody had said to you then, while mm -hmm. you were in that state, would you have acknowledged that, you know, I'm in a backslidden state? Honestly, and that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. It's weird. The state that I was in, I already knew I wasn't right. Mm -hmm. But everywhere I would go, mm -hmm. people would say, "Yeah, Christian man." Mm -hmm. that I couldn't. There was not a soul I could tell that I was a backslider. Yeah. If I went to a party that I shouldn't have gone to, my girl ain't going to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was, I used to stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So it it. In e and in every environment, that was the automatic assumption. Ah, oh, awesome, yes. awesome. So. I, I wanted to bring that up because, you know, I want persons to understand that uh, we, we, we are so, deception is all over these days. Yeah. And, and we're seeing what is happening around us now. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if I should say it's deception in some cases because sometimes we are so desperate for things that we see what we want to see, we hear what we want to hear, and we go after what we want to go after. So let's right. continue with your story now. So Mr. Cancerian is right around the corner. Yeah, so he's <laughs> right around the corner. So he came, he took me for ice cream, and we're talking, and something just prodded well, me. Hold on, hold on. Bogo dreads, carry you go for ice yeah, cream. Yeah, man. Pop, pop, right. pop, pop. <laughs> and it's so weird because all of a sudden, this person that I had no attraction to and no time at all mm -hmm. just started to look so desirable to me yeah um you know i'm a boy 
he actually let out his hair at that time. Mm. You know, and the hair was well groomed. And I said, hey. oh, you look so proper. <laughs> you know, like, you know, just look like a regular person, but very, you know, and he's, you know, very bossy, mm -hmm. short and bossy. Mm -hmm. the, the sad thing is, and what was disturbing to a lot of persons around me, I guess other persons could see that something was off. Yeah. I was the only person that was like, mm, you're in love. I, that's the thing. I really wasn't in love. I think I was in love with a perception. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really the person because yeah. I can tell you there was nothing up to this day. There's nothing about the person in that. I mean, it's my friend, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a, I loved him as a as a friend and as a brethren. Yeah. But never loved him as. A, I should have loved a husband. So, 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 Shireen, how is it then that you got married to this person? And that is the thing. As I said, I, a lot of persons didn't know that I was really and truly not in my right mind mm -hmm. at the time because I can tell you, up to he asked me to marry him, yeah. I still don't remember saying yes. Wow. I remember the first thing out of my mouth was, you sure? Mm-hmm. So up to now, I haven't said yes. I yeah. asked, you sure? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next thing I know, the ring was on my finger, and this man was in front of my father asking for my hand in marriage. My dad was not for it, but he said, you know, I've obviously made up my mind. Yeah. So, and at the time, my dad was not a Christian. Mm. And he said, I've obviously made up my mind. So he, you know, he's like, but you're of two different faiths. How, how is this going to work? And he con he's very eloquent with words. Mm -hmm. And he convinced my dad that, don't worry, we have, Sheridan and I have already discussed this. We're, we're going to make it work, you know, because wow. we're two rational people. Mm -hmm. And well, when I, I can tell you this, um, my best friend, she said to me, she said, I had nothing to do with my wedding, really. Yeah. She planned everything. She did everything. I was so uninvolved, uninterested. Yeah. And she said to me, she sat me down and she said, Shireen, <sighs> This is not right. No mm -hmm. bride can be this disinterested yeah. in their own wedding proceedings. Yeah. And I can't tell you the truth. Walking down the aisle, I felt like a goat with a rope around its neck just being pulled oh, down the aisle. Wow. And when I got to the place, I was like, um, wish I could run. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, God, look at all these people. Yeah. You know, Shireen, this is very profound, you know, because mm -hmm. we, we, we do have a lot of persons in, in, in marriage that have no clue. Um, will tell you that they felt some of those things, but they were afraid to turn back because they don't want to disappoint. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to disappoint the person that's waiting. They don't want to disappoint the, the congregation or the, 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 the guests. Mm -hmm. They don't want to disappoint all those who spent money and that kind of thing. Um, but the truth is, and, and those of you watching, let me ask you a serious question. If you found yourself at the altar with somebody that you know without a shadow of a doubt you did not love, what would you have done? Please put it in the comment box. Let me know what you would have done. So, Shireen, we mm -hmm. know what you did. Yeah. You did not run, but you said, I do. Yeah. I took the plunge. Ah. <laughs> uh, at the time, well, I know you said you, you, knew for, you knew that something was wrong, but you still, you still went for the plunge. Mm -hmm. What was life like after you got married? I tell you this. Right before I got married, I asked the Lord, I tell you, you know, I may have been far, but I wasn't very far. Mm -hmm. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, show me all the red flags. If there are any red flags about this man, just outside of his, his religion and what, it, just show me all the red flags. Mm -hmm. Simone, the red flags came in. What, one thing about our God, you know, he's faithful, you know? Yes, yes, You ask. Yes. You see what the Word of God says? Ask. Yes. Oh, gosh. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and yeah, you shall find. Fine. It's no joke. Yeah. It's the real deal. One yeah. thing I can tell you, our God is faithful. You ask him, he will respond. Yeah. And he showed me the red flags, and which yeah. is why going down the aisle, it was so such a panic. Right. I woke up the next morning being a married woman. Mm -hmm. Simone, traumatized. I'm looking at the man next to me, and I'm like, oh my God. This is supposed <laughs> to have been my friend for how many years? But I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Shereen, what did you do? Oh like, my God. what did you do? And we woke up in the morning and we're staring at each other. And I'm so timid. I'm looking at him and I'm like, morning. But how long were you courting for before you got married? About, um, it would have been about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, it would have been about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I was like, well, Sherry, what did you do? Oh, my you God. You know, I, instant regret yeah. came over me. But I'm, I'm a person. You see, if I make a decision, yeah. you're going to stick it out. Even if my efforts suffer, mm. then I'm going to stick it out. So I made up my mind, Lord, I said, then this is what I chose. This is what I'm going to live with. Yeah. This, and I'm like, Lord, this is my decision. Yeah. You know, I, this is what I made up my mind to live with the situation. Yeah. I really do. I can't tell you that I really know what married life was like because yeah. Really and truly, he was hardly there because he worked at sea. He was a marine engineer. Yeah. So for the majority of the year, he was at sea. So mm -hmm. most times I was home by myself. Mm -hmm. So we had a plan. We said, OK, we're going to design a plan where he can come home more frequently. Yeah. So I went to go get my master's degree. Mm -hmm. He went to go do his chief engineering license, which means he would have been away even longer because mm -hmm. the time, the three months at a time that he would be at home, mm -hmm. it was now spent at school. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it was more time away. So each time he came home, it was like a new person. I'm like, oh, honeymoon, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, because we really didn't know get it right, and yeah. we didn't get to spend that much time. So um, it went on like that mm -hmm. for a while. And then the next thing I knew is that things started to get awkward. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had a plan. So the plan was to go back to school. When we ended school, we'd go and we'd get our own home together. Yeah. And then now I said, all right, you can ask me about babies after that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So remember, you know, the whole point of me getting married, you know, because we want husband and baby. You yes, understand? yes. Here it is now. He is thinking about children, and I'm like, all right, so here we go on now. Mm -hmm. I'm not bringing any children into any rent house. My parents didn't do it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. Each generation needs to be better. Yeah. Right, he right. agreed. Right. One particular morning, I remember, well, not a particular morning, I remember all of a sudden he started asking me now about children, and I'm like, so we didn't have an agreement. Mm -hmm. you know, remember, remember the plan? Yeah. This girl, she writes everything on paper. Yeah. Plan our life on paper. Because mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes God has a sense of humor with the wiping. But you know, <laughs> yeah. But you know, your plan, yeah. you know. And that was, that was me. And so I'm like, why are you straying from the plan? But he kept getting insistent. And I, I didn't know what that was about. Right. The last time he came home, I was about to do my thesis at the time and mm -hmm. things were really rough and intense and yeah. health problems. The moment I married him, yeah. I started having health issues. Wow. The very same month, like serious health issues. Wow. Yeah, and my health just kind of declined, like was on a steady decline mm -hmm. from that. And I, I couldn't understand it. Yeah. I mean, literally the same month. Right. And, uh, it went on and went on, and then by the time I'm supposed to be coming up to my thesis, the health, the health challenges got worse, and I was dealing with that and mm -hmm. focusing in school, and I was going through hell, literal hell on my job yeah. at the time. And it was, everything was happening at one time, and I tell you, I was at a breaking point. Mm -hmm. And it's at that point he's asking me now about babies. And yeah. I'm like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like, can I, I, can't, I really can't see past what I'm going through right now. Yeah. Let us just pass this. Yeah. But when he came home, something was really, really off yeah. that last time when he came home. But because I was so absorbed in everything, right. I just didn't have time to put my finger on it. Mm -hmm. One day I was in my living room, because as I said, I felt like my whole world was crashing down and I was not happy, far mm -hmm. from happy. And how many years were this? was this in marriage? Okay, so we got married in December 2013. Mm -hmm. um, separation came uh, about May. 2016 all right cool. right mm -hmm. so um one day i was in my living room complete with frustration and i was thinking about the whole thing mm -hmm. and i just started to bawl like a baby mm -hmm. and i remember sitting in the city and i was just bawling and i just started pouring out to god yeah. and i just started to repent mm. i remember that day so clearly i just started to repent i said god I repent yeah, yeah. of making this decision independent of you, even though I asked you for red flags to show yeah. me. You were, you were faithful, you showed me, mm -hmm. and I was disobedient. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I repent, I repented of disobedience. I re and then I said to him, I said, Lord, but at the end of the day, yeah. you're a God of covenant, and I know that. Yeah. And so I'm already married the man already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know how you feel about marriages. Yeah. And I said, whether or not this was the person you had for me, yeah. the reality is I married him already. Right, so right. I already told you that 
may go stick to it because I made the decision. Mm -hmm. But if it is your will yeah. that this man comes to my side, yeah. let your will be done. Mm. But if it is not your will, yeah. still let your will be done. done. Yeah. Yeah. Simone, I kid you not, exactly two weeks after, mm -hmm. we made arrangements to go and travel out of town, you know, to spend some time to get to know each other. Because we were going through a rough patch. Yeah. And um, I was at work, and I was leaving work the Friday afternoon, and I said to him, um, all right, I'm, I'm on my way home, but I'm just going to stop by the nail salon and then um, head home. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, honey, I'm here waiting on you. Mm -hmm. I was at the nail salon for less than two hours. Yeah. By the time I got home, I opened the door, mm -hmm. said hello, and heard, oh, 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 my voice echoing. Okay. When I went in, the house was empty of him and his things. Like... <laughs> But empty of him and his things. Like wow. he took his stuff and he he was not there in all in less than two hours. Remember? Wow! We uh, were, yeah, you guys were going out. <laughs> yes, and we were talking on the phone all the way from my office till I got to the nail salon. And he, he the last words he said to me was, "Honey, yeah, man, I'm here waiting on you when you come back." So I walk into the kitchen. And I see a note there written on a paper napkin. Oh, well, it's feel like lifetime. <laughs> it's feel like a lifetime movie. Yeah, welcome to my life. <laughs> All right, so yeah, and um, I saw a message on a napkin. I will always love you, but one day you'll thank me for this. Wow. Exactly two weeks after that prayer. You know, it had to happen, though, you know, because it was getting really difficult for me, Simone, because this wow. man, as I said, he was a devout Rastafarian. Yeah. So, you know, in the morning, 4 o'clock, him up a chant. Aye. And it was one worry, the host come here and said, no, you not done me. You don't bring that in my bedroom. You can go in the study with that. Yeah. So while he's in the bedroom, he's in the study chanting, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm, I'm there, and I'm, I'm holding so that. So you were not a Christian. You, well, you had backslidden, mm -hmm. but yet you're saying in this case, you were now busy praying and seeking the Lord and a rage war. Because I felt like marriage is what was supposed to bring me back now to Christ. I said, this would help me get my oh. life right now. So now that I'm married and everything now, I said, God, may I come back to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in that day, when I repented before the Lord, I recommitted my life to him. Yeah, yeah. But I started before that, the Lord had set me on a journey. So I started going back to a church, I found a church close by that was feeding me with the word. It never felt like mm. my permanent church home at the time, yes. but I knew it was just a resting place until the Lord wanted to set me where he wanted to yes, send me. Yes. So everything worked out in perfect timing after that. Yeah. But I said, the man never done me with them chant, the way my chant, I'm like, God, you are the true and living God. How this man fell, I mean, he was so diligent. Every morning at 4 a.m., he was up yeah. chanting, chanting. So the two different prayers going down in the house, going wow. on now. So, you know, it was a lot of warfare. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. But was there any part of his lifestyle, though, that you had adopted? No, I wouldn't say that. I, I, my parents would say otherwise because it so happened when I started dating him, um, that's when I decided to go back natural. Oh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't because of that. Mm -hmm. It was just that I just felt it was time. So one day my parents came home and noticed the whole of my hair gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember my father came in and he walked right back out. I think at that point he said, oh God, she's lost it. No, you know? But my mother was like, What's going on with you? You know, and I'm like, it's called the big chop. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, like, you know, but they thought it was me adapting. Thing. You know, mm -hmm. and so, I'm but like, not even is the eat because I know they usually have healthy eating habits. Yeah, and he, stuff. he he was he was um, vegetarian. Mm -hmm. That wasn't an issue for me because my father is vegetarian. Oh, okay. So it was just a natural. Yes, yeah, so it was neither here, neither here nor there with me. Yeah. And I wasn't like a heavy meat eater anyway. Mm. So it, it, it never seemed like anything. Thing, yeah. yeah. So that was not a big deal. So let's talk about, uh, because I've, I've, I'm, I'm aware that we often talk about stuff. We, we desire stuff. Huh? Mm -hmm. But when it actually happened, we tend to be like, oh my God, when you realize that uh, he was gone, mm -hmm. What did you do? Seriously, honestly, what did you do? At that point in time, there was shock. 
mm -hmm. naturally. I remember sitting in the chair and I was just, I stared, I sat in that um, living room settee the whole night from the moment I stepped in, just yeah. staring in space. Wow. Do you know what was on my mind the whole time? Yeah. Not the fact that he left. What am I going to tell my parents? Mm. Yeah. That was, so that says a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because it wasn't the fact that he left that didn't bother me. In fact, bless you, yeah, in fact, <laughs> what happened was that, and this is going to sound strange, yeah. I felt like a burden lifted. Mm. But it was, there was another burden. Yeah. And it was the burden of what was I going to tell my parents. So I sat in the, the settee the whole night, just staring up in the ceiling not saying anything, just staring up in the ceiling. Yeah. And in the morning, I got the courage. I picked up the phone. Mm -hmm. I called my dad. You didn't call him to find out where he was? No. OK. All right. I, di I didn't attempt to call him to find out where he was un until about probably the following week. Because mm. the, the, the note was very clear. Yeah. Yeah. I did, it didn't occur to me to call him until after. Mm. Um, I think I called his family like the Sunday. Yeah. And then him probably about tried reaching him the Monday yeah. or something like that. And um, I called my dad. He, my yeah. dad was the first person I called. And I said, I explained the situation to him. Yeah. And he's like, so let me get this straight. He's like, gone. <laughs> and I said, yes, daddy. And he said, like, gone, gone. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, daddy. And he said, um, OK. Well, guess what? In everything, God knows best, Shereen. Mm. So fret yourself no more. Wow, wow. And I, you know what's interesting about this experience? It was after I got married to that young man. Mm -hmm. That's what encouraged my dad to give his life to Christ. Oh my God. Because every time he saw that here he has given his daughter to this man and he said he never felt strong enough spiritually to have the spiritual authority to tell me, no, not under my watch yeah, at yeah. the time. And so that's what made him start to seek God when that happened. And yeah. that's how my dad gave his life to Christ. You know, God is an amazing God. When he says all things work together for our good, it, it, many will not understand. Because one would say, how could out of this, um, you know, we are saying, thank God that somebody gave their heart to the Lord because a marriage is broken um, and stuff. But I think a lot of stuff, when we get to heaven, we'll have those conversations with the Lord. But God works in mysterious ways. Very mysterious ways. So your life moved on. Did you, when was it after that, that you saw your husband? And did you, did you guys ever try to reconcile or what happened thereafter? Can I be honest with you? I, we have not spoken since, like... We never saw each other since. We have not spoken since. Wow. I, it, this happened in 2016. I didn't get divorce papers until 2018. I had oh, he a, signed, sent you divorce papers? Correct. Okay. Um, because I, I really spoke to the Lord about it because I said, Lord, um, I know what your, your perspective is on divorce. I, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I would want my life. And I was fully, I had fully made up my mind to just live as a single woman, you know, because yeah. I was like, you know, I don't, you know. Yeah. And uh, I said, but Lord, I wouldn't mind if he's the one that files because mm -hmm. I really don't, you know, want to. By this time, he had long moved on with his life. He had um, another child and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So he was actually married to a Nigerian. Oh, wow. Yes. And so... So you were his third wedding, Correct. third wife, and then he found, found a fourth wife. No. He actually went back to the second one. Oh, So okay. he, left, he left the first wife for the second wife, for uh -huh. the Nigerian. Uh -huh. Left the Nigerian to marry me, left me to go back to the Nigerian and had a... A, a second child, yeah. Oh. With the, so I don't know the timeline, but it would appear that why he may have run off in such a hurry was maybe because she was with child, maybe on his many, I don't want to Voyages, accuse yeah. him wrongly, mm -hmm. but that's based on how the timeline seems to be set up, that's how it would uh, appear, yeah, yeah. you know. So I don't really know, but we have not 
had a conversation. We have not seen each other. We have not spoken all these years. Yeah. Um, he reached out to my sister. I got divorce papers in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, he started the process, and then all of a sudden, the process just halted. Mm -hmm. I didn't contest it or anything like that, and all of a sudden, it just halted. Mm -hmm. And then last year, mm -hmm. I, I got a... Um, I was on. I, I didn't go to work this particular day, and I got a call from my office to say that there's a large bucket here for Aye. you. Yay! And I'm like, oh, I, uh, wait. <laughs> you know, I would never have thought mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and the young lady, she was, she was confused because she said, um, I see your first name but there's a surname on it I don't recognize mm -hmm. because she wouldn't have known me at, at that at surname. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she said, but I know it's for you, mm -hmm. but I just don't recognize the surname. Is there something you're not telling me? I'm like, please to destroy that. I know exactly who it's from. So I said, you know what, open it and tell me yeah. what is inside there. When she, she opened it, it was, um, I wish you, I love you. I wish you would speak to me. Some, some, something like that. I said, look here, dump that. Mm -hmm. Dump it in the bin. I don't want it. She said, Shireen, but it's so beautiful. I said, eh, dump it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said, dump it. Um, it's not that I have any, because I'd long forgiven, you know. Yeah. But you see, that's the thing. You see, when something is done, you have to, especially when it was not spiritually right in the first place, yeah. you let it go. Because he did not divorce the Nigerian, you know. So oh. he was married to her, and then while married to me. Oh. So he, while he, when he married to me, he was still married to her. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yes, but there was no way to prove it because, you know, they do cultural marriages. Right. And so Jamaica held it as a legal marriage here because oh. that was the only proof they had. Oh, you my know? God, yes, yes. yes. So, so that's what really happened. So, you know, I said, you know, let bygones speak at bygones. I don't want it. Toss it. Yeah. And then this year again, um, another bouquet this time to my house, but mm -hmm. with a code. Mm -hmm. But when I opened it, I saw the code and I knew exactly that it was him. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I don't know who he was trying to deceive. I guess he was trying to throw my parents off or something. Oh so, my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I see something on your on your page, and I don't uh -huh. know if that's why you 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 um you had put up that. Mm -hmm. So you had some old letters yes. and a tissue with something about I love you or something on it. Yes. And you spoke about the matter of decluttering. Correct. Is that it, did it have anything to do with that? Um, or were you just decluttering your life in general? I was decluttering my life in general, but that was also a part of it because I had to go through yeah. and get rid of all the stuff that were associated with him too. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's in doing that, I realized that, but hold on, I have these love letters from when I was like 16, like, mm -hmm. you know, what does it profit me now? Mm -hmm. You know, and you, have, you see this thing about soul ties? Yeah. It's real. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, Shireen, yeah, you read it and you feel good, but how does it profit you now? No. You know, yeah. and I just had to, I just had to part ways with it because yeah. I, it was beautiful then, what then was then. So, yeah. yeah, you just have to move on. And I can't tell you the sense of freedom yeah. that I felt after I bought like a baby. Because mm -hmm. those letters I held on dearly for a long time, but then... And those letters were from him? No. Oh, okay. Because we never, and that's the thing, we never like shared that. And that's, we never shared that. And yeah. so to show you the nature of the relationship that it was really, it was just a friendship. And I said to myself, boy, if you can't make it with a friend, who else you can't make it with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. So we're about to wrap up, Shereen, but mm -hmm. you have since wrote a book. Huh? Yes. Um, and I know one of the things that you do is that, you know, you use your life story to kind of propel and um, fluid this new drive that you have to reach others. So you're a coach. Yes. And um, so you're an author and a coach. And I see when I go to your page, so like there was something else I, I saw there that I want to read. It said, know your worth. And when you know your worth, take yourself home. Um, <laughs> I thought that was nice. Let me read that again, guys. It says, know your worth, and when and and 
take yourself home. There's another one where yeah. you asked about, you put up some options, and you said, winner or whining. Yes. And so I want you to talk with us in about a minute. What's your coaching business about? And including your book, what is it about? And guys, if you're seeing her book is right here, Growing Up in God, a practical spiritual accelerator guide for new Christians. So tell us what your coaching business is about and what your book is about. Okay, so my coaching business really, I specialize in really positioning men and women to just accelerate spiritually. Primarily, that is the, the basis of the business. You know, teaching them to live life by design mm -hmm. and not by crisis. And wow. what that means is not, you're living by intentionality and yeah. you're not spending your life putting out fires. Because yeah. what happens is that Satan distracts us with fires. Yeah. So there will always be something happening in your life mm -hmm. that will prevent you or give you a reason from achieving. Yeah. If you don't get intentional mm -hmm. about achieving that thing and not allowing yourself to be distracted by the different crisis situations that surround you, yeah. you will always be immobile. Mm, I like yeah. it. Yes. And this book is a living testimony of that yeah. because it's called Grow Up in God. Yeah. And, you know, as I would have told you as a backslider, it was born out of that. And when I recommitted my life to Christ, what is in this book is the journey, what the Lord showed me mm -hmm. of how to quickly get back on track yeah. to establish a relationship with him where you're seeing the fruit, you're seeing the fruit, yeah. and you're walking in the power. Yeah. You yeah. understand? Yeah. So that's what this book is about. And as I said, it's a living testimony mm -hmm. of living your life by design and not by crisis because when this book, I started this book from 2018, mm -hmm. it's barely 100 pages, Simone. Mm -hmm. But why would a, a book that's barely 100 pages take you to write from 2018? Yeah. Reason yeah. being, one, when I started it, I, I said to the Lord, I said, look here, Holy Spirit, I'm not writing this book without you. Yeah. I know you want me to write this book, but I'm not writing it without you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to start unless you give me the go ahead. Right. And so... The moment I started writing the book, when I put pen to paper, the warfare started. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, in different areas of my life, the enemy attacked my finances, he attacked my body, he, you name it. In fact, the night, the very night I started to write the book, yeah. I had a dream. Yeah. I was in a bathroom, sitting on a toilet, and a big snake, mm. yellow, with a massive head, wrapped itself around me. Wow. And slammed me against the wall. Mm. And this thing started to communicate with me telepathically. Yeah. Meaning there was nothing coming out of its mouth, yeah. but I could understand what it was saying through my mind. Yeah. And yeah. what I remember hearing is, if you ever, mm -hmm. if you ever. Yeah. And I was thinking, if you ever what? But then it came in my spirit, if you ever write the book. attempt to write this book, yeah. finish yeah. writing this book. And I got scared. I yeah. mean, because it, it felt real. I mean, I jumped out, out of the bed and I fell to the floor on my knees and I was sweating yeah. and my heart was racing yeah. because the whole thing felt so real. Mm. And so I paused because I was genuinely scared. Yeah. And then I remember at the beginning of this year, I started, I took it up again and I said, Lord, I'm going to do this. Yeah. What happened? The enemy attacked my health again yeah. in a massive way. Yeah. And I started feeling sorry for myself and I remember I was praying with my aunts one night and I fell asleep on them in the middle of the prayer feeling sorry for myself yeah. and I remember I heard my name in the deep recesses of sleep. Yeah. Shireen, mm -hmm. wake up. Yeah. This is a test. Get up yeah. and begin to praise. Mm -hmm. You get up and begin to praise. This is a test. You better go finish that book. Yes. And that was the night I made up my mind. This was in January. Mm. I made up my mind. I said, God, whatever the enemy does to my body, yeah. I'm begging you. He can touch my body, but he can't touch my soul. I'm begging you the energy and the grace to finish it. Mm. So the more I feel the pain, yeah. you know, every time I feel pain, that's when I'm going to write. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I did. This book that nearly, <laughs> I couldn't finish it in three years. I finished it in three days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look three at God. Three days of pain. Look three at God. Three days of intense pain. Yeah. Because I stood to my promise. I said, every time I felt pain, I was going to write. Yeah. That's what I did. Three days and it was finished by the, exactly January 31st. Yeah. Well, God be praised. Yeah. And here it is that this book is for new Christians. Not only for new Christians it says new Christians but based on the fact that my journey 
was a journey of a recommitted Christian coming from out of being backslidden. Yeah. So it's for new Christians, mm -hmm. but it's also what to accelerate spiritually. Yeah. And they just gave their life to Christ because most most new Christians, you'll find that they just give their life to Christ, and the question is, okay, I'm saved. <laughs> yeah. What next? Yeah. This book. It's a practical guide that helps yeah. you. It's not theory. Yeah. It's very practical. So it tells you exactly what to do yeah. to get the results quickly. Yeah. Recommitted Christians, if you're a backslider and you want to get back on that journey with that relationship with Christ, this mm -hmm. is the book that tells you exactly what you need to, to do. do. Yeah. Um, if you are a Christian for how many years mm -hmm. and you, you're basically stunted, mm -hmm. this is the book to get you, get some fire yeah. in you if you yeah. want to see results. Ah, I love it. Uh, you know, I must say God is so awesome because God is about building up his people. Okay. And so um, it's not just about going to church and going to your Sunday school, but God is finding so many other ways to empower us and build us up. Uh, and so I want to just bless God for persons like yourself. Uh, Shereen, thank you so much for coming and sharing. I am sure just listening to you, I mean, I was so, I, I, I'll just say it here. When I was coming, I said to my, uh, I said to my camera, a videographer, I said, I don't think we're going to be more than half an hour with Shereen. And right now, I think we're up on the hour mark oh, <laughs> and, and and if you're listening guys I'd love to hear from you you know what did you think you know you know when you listen to Shereen as a matter of fact when you saw her first were you thinking that such an amazing story was gonna come out I mean you bowled me over you know but Shereen thank you so much um, what's next for you what can persons expect next from you Oh, wow, there's so many things going on. Mm -hmm. um, later on, by December, I have, I'm all about kingdom education. Yeah. And so it's not just about books for me. I love kingdom products. So I do yeah. t-shirts as well. Mm -hmm. And also, um, as I said, I specialize in kingdom products. So coming out in November, I have some Christian alphabet cards for children mm. where children can learn Christian core values from the al while learning the alphabet mm. as well. Really nice. lovely cards. So it makes a perfect Christmas gift, mm -hmm. you know, for a relatively young child. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't say about about three, I mean, children up until 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12 can use it because what it really is teaching is Christian core values. Yeah, yeah. Are you a Sunday school teacher? No, but I've been told I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, in the midst of all of this, she is also a product manager. So you hear her talking yeah. like, you know, <laughs> she's very busy, very, very busy. Yeah. Um, coach, entrepreneur, author, um, Sunday school teacher, minister, you name it, whole heap of things, big things. Um, thank you so much again for no coming and sharing. I pray that the Lord will bless you. Oh, I pray you. for healing thank in you. the areas where the doctors cannot talk touch in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that the Lord will enlarge your territories Amen. and that the Lord will begin to rebuild your foundation with precious stones as his words have declared. Amen. I declare that your eyes will now be opened mm. and that as the Lord open your eyes, you are going to begin to see things and that you're going to be able to reach out to others who can't see, who, who we want, to, the Lord will, that the Lord will position you to capture those who are about to step off that brink and regret yes. stepping off. Yes. So the Lord bless you again. Oh, Thank, you so you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me again. Awesome. Well, guys, there you have it. Another unique story. I am about recognizing that I can't predict what God is about to do on this in, um, on this platform, you know, and the stories that He brings um, cause us to come in contact with. But if you were blessed, if you can identify with what Shireen has gone through, do let us know. And of course, guys, reach out to us over there on Instagram, uniquely me TV talk show, or of course um, www.godsdailyportion.com. It's all there, guys. So looking forward to hearing from you. And of course, guys, make sure you are subscribed. Thank Thanks again. Your support means a lot to me. So guys, see you next week. And oh, just before I forget, how could I forget that? Shireen's book, it's where? On Amazon? Yes, it's available on Amazon. It's also available at Worship and Faith International Fellowship's bookstore. So you can always get that. It's also available on Kindle. Awesome, awesome. So yes. guys, go show her some love, all right? So see you next week. Bye-bye. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. 
Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you for tuning in to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Remember, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you.